Hi, it's Paul from Wicked Acorn. It's apple picking time again. And today we're going to bake an apple pie. It's from the Dungeons and Dragons cookbook. Now who knew that was a thing? There's another Canadian in sale this month. Well, for the next four years, actually. She's the daughter of a friend of ours. Yes, we're that age now. She's here going to the University of Manchester on a scholarship studying geology, I think. And the irony in that is unbearable. We come from a part of Canada that's nickname is The Rock. We're going to update our apple picker, and although the recipe doesn't call for it, we're going to make our own pie crust. Heartland's Rose Apple and Blackberry Pie. As the story goes, a hungry halfling returned from her hillside stroll with a heavy basket of crisp rose apples and plump blackberries. In typical indecision halfling fashion, she couldn't decide which to fill her pie with, so she chose both. And thus the legendary halfling dessert pie was born. A thick handmade crust and a flaky buttery top blanket a tart and tasty rose apple nearly any apple suffices, season pending of course, and blackberry filling with spiced ground accents. Some halflings even dust their crust with a white cheddar that melts for a unique flavor, but all of them agree that it would be a sin to serve this without a scoop of freshly whipped sweet cream. So that's, that's going to be like 30 apples. Okay, so, uh, you can pick your apples anytime, but uh, for maximum sweetness, the only way to tell if they are ripe is to cut them open and look at the seed. And apple seeds, well, that's the color of an apple seed, right? So this apple is ready for picking. That's 2,280. So as you can see, the first one I showed you is a tiny one. Various sizes. We're not a orchard here making McDonald's Kentucky Fried Chicken Apples. This is going to be the tedious bit preparing the apples. You have to peel them and core them and cut them in slices. This is way more than we need. This is enough for probably four pies. So we've got our apple assembly line here and everybody thinks my my silly apple corer is funny. But it works. I don't know if you can see that. It's a tent pole or a gazebo pole or something. But you have to do it like the channel. You can't do it all the way through. can't argue with results. So we got a whole whack of apples that are starting to turn brown and that's actually enough for two pies because we're going to make two different pies but next we have to cook them. We're having an intense sugar conversation here now. It just says sugar. So we're going to use We're going to use this one. Let's see it. It is Demerara, the pantry for coffee, biscuits, and crumbles. This stuff. This is what we've chosen. Third cup of sugar. To toss in with the apples. Also calls for half a teaspoon of cinnamon. Half a teaspoon of cinnamon girl. <laughs> and 
And finally, about a tablespoon of cornstarch. However, we're just using rice flour as a substitute. Tablespoon of rice flour, is that what you said? Yep. As a substitute for cornstarch. Yes. All right. And then we toss to combine, and we'll throw it in the big pot. All right. You want a spoon, Dewey? Yeah. There's wooden spoons. How about this spoon? Any sort of spoon will. This or wooden one. going in this pot? Yep. I wonder, is it going to fit? 50-50. Yeah. Just. Cool. And just cook that down. I don't know how stovetops work here. What uh, <laughs> what number do we want? Uh, medium heat would do good. Medium? Yeah. I think that's medium. Just... How long are we going to do this for? About 10 minutes. And the peels will go back into the garden. So you're going to cube that up and then what are you going to do? And then I'll cut it into the flour with a fork. We're going to put it in the flour with a fork. So this mountain of butter is for more than one pie, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How many pies are we making? We're making two. Okay, so half of that is for one pie. We need a bottom and a top, so you know, it means more butter. <laughs> Okay, I guess I should do a few sit-ups before we eat this. <laughs> so we're using two cups of flour per pie, and since we're making two pies, we'll use four cups of flour. This is just a half cup measurement, so we'll do eight in total. Good math. Uh-oh. Fumble! It's uh, not the first time this happened. <laughs> <laughs> what? Fumble. don't have the so, proper implement so we're going to use this big fork big fork big fork and generally you just it's probably a, a what a it's a big tr troll fork <laughs> troll fork turkey fork and generally oh, come on man get with the theme here o ogre fork <laughs> ogre fork <laughs> is that what you want we not a turkey fork turning this into shrek <laughs> yeah ogre fork ogre fork Do you just cut the butter into the flour until they're generally around pea-sized granules? So somebody invented a tool for this. I have one at home. I will have one at home. You can use it for any sorts of flaky delicacies. I use it for scones a lot. Uh-oh. Oh god. <laughs> it's you a, started a controversy. Is it not pronounced scones? I'm sorry, I'm Canadian. Well, I don't know. They argue about it. What? <laughs> they they argue scone. about it here. No. And I, I'm surprised you call it a scone. Did you call it a scone or a scone? Scone. Scone? We always grew up calling it a tea bun. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> so, we, we add another element into the pronunciation. <laughs> How do you pronounce S C O N E? T bun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
If you don't have a pastry cutter though, there's a number of ways to do this. This is generally the most common. You could also cut it in with butter knives, actually, and just like physically cut it. I've also seen people freeze the butter and then grate it with a cheese grater to oh. incorporate it in the flour. Okay. So there's there's options. But the best option is the proper tool. In my opinion, yes. So, so it doesn't stick to the... Yeah. That is a nice massive lump of pie dough and we can divide it up into equal portions for each of our pies and roll them out. a little bit of flour to keep it from sticking to the rolling pin. And just start rolling it out. The less you do with your hands, generally the better. Roll it out into a nice circular shape as possible. It's looking a little uh, square. How thick does it end up being? Great question. I'd say probably a quarter of an inch is probably a good amount. But as long as it fits the pie pan, you're good. So we need a bit more so it goes over the edges. Just, Make a patch? Work with it a little bit and generally it's fine. You just can't work with it too heavily. Okay, well it's all rolled out to fit the size and I can Salsa, Ellie. just oh, see I'm not flowery quite enough out there. You're gonna roll it onto the rolling pin. pin just for ease of transport. So onto the rolling pin, pull my pie shell in, and roll it off the rolling pin into the pie shell. Nice. And you can move it a little bit and just fit it right into your pie tin. Like so. There you go. And we'll leave the overhang until we put the top on. Oh, clever. Yeah. Well, that's reduced a lot. <laughs> so this is a... Uh, smells really good. So we've got the blackberries here, and we're just going to add uh, the rest of the sugar and rice flour, which we're using for cornstarch, and a little bit of lemon juice. So we're adding... How thing. much uh, blackberries was it? Do you remember? This was 12 ounces 12 of blackberries. 12 ounces, yeah. We're adding about a third of a cup of sugar. Two tablespoons of cornstarch. Or rice flour here. a tablespoon of lemon juice. Mm -hmm. And then we'll toss to the 
and we can pour it directly into our prepared pie shell. So one of these is apple and blackberry, is that right? Yep. And the other is just apple. Yeah. Because we have surplus apple. And we have someone that doesn't like blackberries. Now, should we do the big pie as a mix or the tiny pie as a mix? I have no opinion. We'll do the big pie as a mix. We can just scoop that right in. This is going to be fantastic. Look at it. Just spread it as evenly as we can. Really mush it in there. apples on top and put the top over. Yes. We'll just start scooping an appropriate amount of apples up, leaving enough for our other pie. Right, because the other one is solely apple, so we're not using half. Yeah. And yeah. we'll try to keep them a bit more focused on the center as the recipe dictates. So we've got the top of the pie rolled out, and we'll just lay it right on over. Wow. Like so, and then we'll go around, cut the edge nice and clean, and we can crimp the edge using either a fork or our fingers. Adds a couple vent holes and put it in the oven. All right. easier to do it with a fork. And that sticks to the top and bottom Probably together? together. Is that? Yeah. And you can make it as pretty or unpretty as you wish. Oh, that's getting quite sticky. Now we've got the edges all crimped and we're just going to add a nice little vent hole up here. You can get a little creative with this, do any sort of designs, I'm trying to make a little eye to make it a little thematic. <laughs> <laughs> so I like it. Yeah, can I even add some eyelashes, you know? <laughs> really get in there. Just kind of do what you want. <laughs> okay, turn it around so we can see it right side up. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. So we'll put them in the oven and cook them at 425 for about 25 minutes. And then we lower the temperature to about... 375 Fahrenheit, whatever that is in Celsius, and cook it for another 25 to 30 minutes until the top is nice and golden and it's all cooked. It's okay. We can just do one. Oh no. Here we go. Yay! Look how pretty it is! Well, we have to let this cool for a significant time now, right? At least 10 minutes. At least 10 minutes, okay. <laughs> All right. We'll see you in a bit when we cut it open. Doesn't it look great? What's the name of this pie? I've forgotten. Uh, it is the Heartland's Rose Apple and Blackberry Pie. <laughs> That's a piece of pie. <laughs> I can make it smaller. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> Oh, because there's metal there. Right. Oh, oh look at that. <laughs> Perfect. Have the rest. Oh, just a little look at that. Appropriate pie slice. Just size. a little circle bit. It says it must be served with. That is cream, a, right? That, that's a lot of whipped cream. Mm -hmm. Can't even see the top of it anymore. <laughs> that's a bit too much whipped cream. It's quite good. Her pie is, is it oven. scalding hot? Mmm. My whipped cream? It's 
good. Definitely do that with rhubarb too. Yeah. That's really nice. Well done. Thank you. Oh no, no. <laughs> You're not afraid to be in the video, are you? I don't want my face on it. Okay. There are a lot of great recipes in the Dungeons & Dragons cookbook. If you want to get yourself a copy, check the description for a link. The pie was absolutely delicious and the crust was perfect. Good job, Bree. We managed to stop ourselves from eating it all in one go so we could take it on our next adventure where we're going to find the oldest thing we've ever looked for on this channel, a petrified tree in Bolton. Or is it Ipswich? I don't know, I always get them mixed up. It's a, it's a palindrome. So keep an eye out for that one. Uh, there might be a link up here. Now, if you know what to do with the rest of our apples, we, we've got quite a few here. <laughs> Leave a suggestion. And don't forget to hit the uh, subscribe daily and the uh, notification bell so you can find out when we put out a new video. See you next time.